grand old partisan, celebrates more than 16 decades of Republican heroes and heroics. Today, I laud Hamilton Gamble, born in Virginia, November 29, 1798. Age 20, he relocated to St. Louis, first working as a court clerk, then appointed Secretary of State. In 1846, he won a term in the State House. Five years later, this popular Whig was elected to the Supreme Court. While serving as its Chief Justice, he wrote a resounding dissent to a ruling against the slave Dred Scott, who was suing for his freedom. Quote, once free, always free, he affirmed. After several years away, Gamble returned to Missouri at the suggestion of his brother-in-law, Republican U.S. Attorney General Edward Bates, to help counter secessionism. Early during the Civil War, while the Democrat governor supported the Confederacy, a state convention voted 98 to 1 for the Union. When the governor and lieutenant governor fled the state capitol, the convention declared their offices vacant and elected Gamble and another pro-Union delegate to replace them. Quote, in looking around for the best man calculated for the position, all eyes turned to Hamilton R. Gamble. His great purity of character, his talents, and his devotion to the whole country pointed him out as peculiarly fitted for the crisis. With great reluctance, almost repugnance, he yielded to the demands of the convention and became governor of Missouri. Governor Campbell traveled to Washington, D.C. several times to meet with President Lincoln. Mindful of Missouri Unionists who still held slaves, he cautioned Lincoln against undue haste on emancipation. It was at his insistence that the president rescinded General Fremont's order of August 1861, freeing slaves in the state. Emancipation would be a nationwide policy, proclaimed at the proper time. After growing anti-slavery sentiment swept the radical wing of the Republican Party to victory in the 1862 midterms, Gamble convened another state convention to approve an emancipation measure. He died in January 1864. Hamilton Gamble was remembered as, quote, a man noble and generous in all his impulses, firm as a rock in the discharge of duty, governed in all his actions strictly by principle, not policy, kind and courteous in his manners, pure in his thoughts and affectionate in his disposition. Back to basics for the Republican Party is my civil rights history of the GOP. To quote the book, the more we Republicans know about the history of our party, the more the Democrats will worry about the future of theirs. For more information, seegrandoldpartisan.com.